Hello, New York. I am from Chicago, and uh, since you are all from New York, uh, I can say that the Voxels that, uh, that uh, Florida just mentioned is very similar to the Code Liberation Foundation. Uh, so if you know any, anything about that, or if you're interested in getting more women involved in making video games and into technology, I would love to have a conversation with you about that. So for today, I am here to let everybody get started with Microsoft Bot Framework. And I have long hair, and I'm wearing one of those stage microphones, so please excuse if you like hear the thumping. And I don't know how those actors do it, but this is going to be super cool. And I, uh, I also have a uh, remote, so I can try to keep track of my slides and also walk around. So I am the second to the last talk of today, and I'm very, very excited to be here with all of you. And so let me just get myself set up and see if my laser pointer is working. OK, all right, might need that because this is a really big screen. Really big screen. I can't just go up there and like point out a word. So let's see if I can use my remote to advance the slides. That's OK. All right, back forward. So let's talk about bots. And now my coworker, Gabby, she introduced you all to NodeBots, which is similar but different from these chatbots using Node.js. And now why is this interesting? Why is Microsoft Bot Framework interesting? The idea is that you can use uh, Microsoft Bot Framework to write your code once and then publish that chatbot to all these other different channels like Slack or Skype or sending text messages. Maybe if you use Twilio, you can send it through SMS and uh, you can also put it on the web. So instead of just making one Slack bot or one Skype bot, you make a bot and then you can publish it to all these different places. You can even have a Facebook Messenger bot. What is required? So you obviously need Node.js and NPM, and you, it, it's nice if you have a GitHub account, you use Git as your version control. Uh, I absolutely love working in Visual Studio Code. It's kind of like a Notepad++ or Sublime text editor, but Visual Studio Code is like this really lightweight, beautiful, like the, uh, the presentation showed the guy skateboarding and you know high five in the clouds as opposed to being a sumo wrestler. You know, Visual Studio is a sumo wrestler, Visual Studio Code is the skateboarder. And for your signups needed, uh, if you want to use, uh, if you want to host your web application on Microsoft Azure, which is our cloud platform, you can get an endpoint URL to put your bot online so you can talk to other people instead of like talk to yourself, not as fun. So talking to other people, you can sign up through Azure and then that way you can get like a mygroovybot dot azurewebsites.net, which you can use as an endpoint URL. So you can either have like a free trial of our Azure subscription or you can sign up. And so like, like I said, these are the awesome channels. We've actually added a few more now. And so what is this all about? What do you need? Uh, you want to, we want your bot to have this framework of the bot builder. You go to the developer portal and you use the bot directory. And I will get into this a lot more. This is just sort of a, a high level overview of like what is required to build one of these cool Microsoft bot framework bots. And so the brains of your bot are in the universal bot. Uh, so universal is, it manages your bot's conversation with users across multiple channels. Uh, you can begin your dialogue, you can begin an action, you can set up a connector, you can end the conversation. And so this is all about creating a chat bot that has different forms of dialogue that you can speak to in an effort to try to make it as realistic as possible. And in that vein, uh, you also connect the universal bot to a chat and console connector uh, to multiple channels via the bot framework, like I said. So this, this is how it all works. This is kind of the syntax. This is how you can use either uh, two languages. You can use uh, Node.js or C Sharp. I like to build my bots in Node.js because it's more lightweight and a little scrappier, a little faster to get through. So I can do a demo of a very simple bot. Let's get right to it. And let me know if you can see. OK, I think you guys can still see everything I'm doing up on the screen. So for the simple bot, I want to show you the demo of Echobot. Echobot just replies to the message that it receives. So if I type, hi, Empire, it, uh, if I am still connected to the internet, which I very m well might not be connected to the internet, I see a little uh, arrow here, that's wrong. Uh, it'll say, hi, you said, hi, Empire. 
So this is where the internet connectivity comes into play, so bear with me. So uh, let's see here. I need to actually connect to the internet. Oh, it was working, and then I put my computer to sleep to save battery, and now it's not. OK, connection successful. Let's try this again. <laughs> Okay, so let me know when this page refreshes and we can, you can see that building a bot can be extremely simple and all the code is available online. If you go to uh, someplace like uh, docs.botframework.com and that's the English US version. So if you go to docs.botframework.com, you can see right over here where it says bot builder for Node.js and bot builder for .NET and a whole lot of really cool other information. So if I click on bot builder for Node.js, it opens up this menu that says getting started. I can just click on getting started and it'll tell me everything I need to know right here. It tells me how to initialize using the NPM and I can just like copy paste all this code and put it into my Visual Studio code. If I like pop that up, open right over here. I can just like paste it right into here and save it and maybe create a GitHub repository to have my code shared online and then maybe I, if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll hook up some continuous integration or continuous deployment to Azure through GitHub and that way I can keep this running update of using my code and building my bot. Okay, so I, be I believe I've refreshed and we're online. So let's try to say hi Empire again. Hey, you said hi, Empire. Super simple. Let me, let me say something else. Woo. It, you said woo. So it's an echo bot, very descriptive name. Um, so let's build something that's a little more fun, a little more complex. There's the demo of the simple bot. All right, so next. What is Tracery? Any hands for anybody who's heard of Tracery JS? One in the back. All right. You guys might like this. Uh, so life is full of moments of unexpected humor. Uh, and humor is, really has a lot of roots in the unpredictable. If something just totally unpredictable happens, you can have a strong emotional reaction to it. And sometimes we all burst out laughing, like the time Nick's bot fell off the table. <laughs> Everybody laughed and that was awesome. It, you, you did it with style. So, so what is Tracery? This is a JavaScript library by Kate Compton, otherwise known as Galaxy Kate. And it's, uh, it's a super simple tool and a language to generate text. She uses it to make a lot of really cool things. And I really recommend everybody get into this. You can find out more at tracery.io. But what it is, is a uh, sort of a Mad Libs text replacement tool. You can write a sentence and you can put uh, like hashtags or pound signs around a word in that sentence and it will replace it based on a grammar set of rules that you write. Uh, so I'm going to show you something funny that I built and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, so let's read these out loud. Dramatically provide key technologies inside of win-win growth strategies. How about the next one? Efficiently envision win-win technologies through streamlined cloud solutions. What am I talking about? What is this? I put this on Facebook because I was so happy with it and my friends really loved it. They're like, hi, seamlessly leverage self-sustaining innovations and agile takeaways. Um, professionally envision robust cloud solutions for streamlined frameworks. Oh my God. My friend said, pack that up and sell it as a virtual business consultant. The money would print itself. <laughs> what is this thing? What did I make? Let me show you the, the files. Uh, everybody here, she's probably super familiar with gitignores, readmes, even package.json. That's just metadata. So I'll blaze through this because we all know about it because we're here at a node conference. Uh, the guts are going to be in the app.js, and the pretty face is in the index.html. So, you know, the git ignore, everybody knows about that. Uh, I've got some like secret app tokens and passwords that I've got put in my, my VS code because I'm using Visual Studio code to edit my text. So uh, just remember to like add your, your secrets that you want to not put on online in your VS code and then add that one line in your git ignore. 
Uh, this is a README. Everybody knows about README. Uh, it's used in the language of Markdown, but it just contains the information about the other files in the directory as part of the documentation. And package.json is the metadata about your app, and most importantly, it includes the list of the dependencies to install from npm when running npm install. So I want to show you that there's Bot Builder, which is Microsoft, and Express. We had a really funny joke about you don't reinvent the internet, you just use Express. Uh, I've got Restify HTTPS. I just wanted to throw in some stuff so that I uh, had some buffer for the future, didn't forget anything. And there's actually an NPM module called Tracery Grammar. Somebody went and made this in Node.js, so it works with my bot, and it's awesome. Uh, the index.html, this is just uh, an iframe that Microsoft actually like gives you through the bot portal. Uh, you go in the portal and you can uh, embed an iframe into an HTML page, and so you can actually navigate to a website. Like for me, you can actually go to tracerybot.azurewebsites.net right now from your phones, and you could talk to this corporate jargon bot I built. But here is the code in the, uh, the app.js. Here's our header. Uh, so using Microsoft Bot Framework is pretty easy, and like I said, it's very well documented online. Uh, so you can add your requirements like Restify, Bot Builder, and Tracery Grammar to get it up and running and get it on the internet. And you use Restify to boot up a server, and I've got some uh, environment variables in here that make it either run on the local server or have it run. Uh, if I host it on Azure, it's actually online, it's not running locally, so it works in both instances using the double bars, I mean, or. And uh, I also log to the console that it's, hey, I'm listening on port number such and such when the app is running. So there's the header info. Now let's talk about creating the chat bot. Uh, this, you use Microsoft's uh, bot framework developer portal to generate your app ID and your app password when you register a bot. So you have to go through the process of registering your bot. You give it a name. Uh, you think about like what kind of icon or logo you want it to have. You sort of think about what you want it to be. Maybe it's a sandwich ordering bot or a pizza ordering bot. Or maybe it could be uh, something really cool like uh, scheduling haircut appointments with a, a business or schedule, like booking a hotel or doing other really cool, cool, awesome things through business that you embed in an online website. So that's when you register your bot. And you, it gives you an app password and an app ID. And you want to save those somewhere secret. I've got them here in, as uh, I set environment variables to uh, prevent them from being exposed online. And then, like I mentioned, a universal bot. We are just starting to post some messages to our universal bot, and it is listening for them. So let's see. We've got, we've got some origins and some hello worlds in here. So let me uh, just say, let me just talk about how, uh, did I skip one? There, OK. All bots have at least one root slash dialog. And the root slash dialog thing, that means that no matter what happens, it is triggered to say something. And we, we actually saw a presentation where somebody created a new route and they called it like slash greetings. And so that sort of turned into, sort of turned into this, routing. How are you? I'm not feeling well or I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? So the how are you is like the slash greeting. And then it, you could you could create more and more routes following the arrows. Like, you don't look well, what's wrong? Or, are you sick? Or, I'm doing great, what are you up to? What are you reading? You should see a doctor. Did you sleep well? So you can have these different routes. Now, the, the tracery bot I built that spits out corporate jargon, it's not smart, it doesn't listen to you. It just is triggered based on everything you say, similar to the echo bot. I haven't implemented any other kinds of routes, but I can talk about those some more. So uh, let me talk about origin and hello world a little bit. So this origin is a tracery thing. That's, that is the sentence that gets flattened out and spat out to the user. So I'm gonna tell you about uh, the flattening of the grammar and you see that the word origin here is surrounded by those, those pound signs or those hash marks. Uh, I don't know what the kids are calling them these days, you know. If, if it's in music, it's a sharp sign. If it's in, on Twitter, it's a hashtag. So, that word origin turns into uh, a, several other things. Uh, another, a few examples of dialog handlers are waterfalls, closures, dialog objects, and simple dialogues. Really what we're doing is just a simple dialog, but this is more of a waterfall. Like you see how the arrows just waterfall into the next thing, and what the bot says is dependent on what you say. 
So here, the, our origin is hello world. That is a one string. It's inside the apostrophes. And we're using tracery inside of Node.js, inside of the bot framework, to create a bot that spits out hello world no matter what you say to it. No, you can say anything in the world and it will say hello world. We can add some more complex uh, features to it with the replacement grammars. You notice how instead of saying hello world, I've said hello noun. And that noun has an array. Right now it's only one, it just says world, but you can keep adding more to it. You can change verb noun with a comma and an exclamation point. Still, it's only a list of one, so our options are limited. You can also start modifying them with capitalizations and punctuation. So the list of modifiers is you can capitalize the first word, you can make a word plural, or you can tell the difference between if something is an angry cat or a sad panda. You notice there's a difference between saying a and n. So you can make your text a little bit more grammatically correct. So check this out. I've added nouns to be world, planet, and universe. I put them in an array separated by commas and put them all in their own set of quotes. Verbs, hello, goodbye, aloha. Instead of calling it verb, I could name that anything I want. I could name it greeting. So my origin could be greeting.capitalize and surrounded by hashtags, comma space, noun. So now I get aloha, planet, hello, universe, hello, world, goodbye, world. And this is all using this, this grammar system. So what I did is pretty funny. Uh, I decided to run with it and I found Corporate Ipsum, which is a website for generating lorem ipsum text. And I started noticing a pattern. I noticed that there's an adverb, like seamlessly, completely, efficiently. That's an adverb, it ends in L-Y. And there's a verb, like provide, or bring, administrate, or like, you know, corporate jargon's all about like dominate, and administrate, and defenestrate. <laughs> Disruptive, cutting edge. Okay, like sh just shout out some like bleeding edge, cutting edge, new, exciting. What are some adjectives that you hear about technology all the time? Come on. Robust. Robust. Scalable. Scalable. Disruptive. Disruptive. Agile. Agile. Game changing. Game changing. <laughs> This is good. Like, so I tried to keep my list a little bit small because like I said, this is all up on GitHub so I can share it with you lovely people. And if I just had a ridiculously long list of words, my code would be kind of illegible. Ooh, another one. So I kept my list a little bit small, but if you clone my GitHub repository or if you fork it, you can start adding in as many words as you want. And then you'll start to have fun like I did. So we've got disruptive. And then I said like cloud solutions, growth strategies, metrics, deliverables, uh, takeaways, and I, I really just uh, I went to town. So let me do a demo of Tracery Bot live and in the flesh, in the, in the not flesh. So hi, let me, do, let me type empire here and see if we're still up and running. Mm -hmm. All right, empire, what should we do? We should organically empower robust cloud solutions from cross-platform growth strategies. Thank you, thank you very much. And if that doesn't work, then maybe we should try objectively dominating agile metrics without cutting edge methodologies. <laughs> Okay, so let me hop in back to the slides. Uh, I'm about two minutes away from being done, and I thank you all so much for bearing with me through the internet issues and everything. So if you wanna learn more about tracery or using Microsoft Bot Framework, you can follow the steps. I have three blog posts on my blog, Sarah Says. It's, you can find that at aka.ms slash Sarah Sexton. And so uh, I've got blog parts one, two, and three. Blog part four will be introducing natural language understanding so that you can say different phrases to your bot. So instead of saying yes or no, you could say, sounds interesting, which doesn't even mean yes. But sometimes if you say, hey, do you want to try a pepperoni pizza with, uh, with battery acid on it? <laughs> and you say, sounds interesting, that actually means yes. <laughs> 
So you can find out more at my blog post, and uh, you can check out my github.com, which is where I have the code for TracerybOt, and you can see how I implemented all that corporate jargon that follows the, the parts of speech of like adverb, adjective, noun, and then preposition, adjective, noun. TracerybOt.azurewebsites.net is how you get to the, talk to that bot. My slides are at aka.ms slash nodebot if you want to check out this slide presentation. And to build your own bots, just go to dev.botframework.com. I have been Sarah Sexton. You can find me on Twitter at S-A-E-L-I-A, Salia. And thank you very much for having me.